Introduction We all see a wide variety of plants and animals around us. Do you know, Shruti? There are more than one million species of animals around whole earth and about half a million species of plants on earth. On one hand, we have bacteria which are microscopic and on the other hand, we have blue whale, about 30 meters or redwood trees, sequoia of California of about 100 meters in height. Likewise, insects have lifespan of few days, while trees, especially pine trees, live for 1,000 years. Every organism is different from others. Yes, in our class also, no two students are similar. Anurag is tallest, while Shilpa is shortest in height. Similarly, nose of Deepti is sharp and pointed, while Akshay's nose is flat and broad. Kriti has small hands with small hand span, while Deepak has big hands with big hand span. These differences are within a species. But within a genus, there are some similarities like human beings, chimpanzees, gorilla and monkeys are all alike. Similarly, among plants, melon, watermelon, bitter gourd, pumpkin, bottle gourd, cucumber etc. have many similarities. But when we study two genus, then we find out they are entirely different. Let us do an activity to find out the similarities within a genus and differences among various genera. When we study physical characters of desi cow and jersey cow, we find very few differences. But when we see them in a crowd, then jersey cow can be distinguished from a distance due to its height and stature. But when we look at cow and monkey, then we find that man resembles more to a monkey than a cow. Although all are mammals. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Identify basis of classification Understand classification and evolution Understand the hierarchy of classification groups Understand the characters of Kingdom Monera Understand the characters of Kingdom Protista Understand the characters of Kingdom Fungi Understand the characters of Kingdom Plantae Find out the divisions of Kingdom Plantae. Basis of Classification We have already discussed that the diversity of living beings on Earth has evolved slowly over millions of years. The variety is so diverse that we can study all of the species one by one in a lifetime. So we try to find out the similarities among the organisms so that we can keep them into different classes, groups, genera or species and then study them. This grouping is known as classification. Why do we actually need classification is a big question. We have some points to make it clear. Classification makes the study of a wide variety of organisms easy. Classification is the tool by which one can deal with great diversity of living forms. Classification projects before us a picture of all life forms at a glance. Classification is essential to understand the interrelationships among different groups of organisms. Classification forms a base for the development of the other biological sciences. Do you all know that it was Aristotle, 384 to 322 BC, also known as father of zoology, who for the first time classified animals into two groups. Animals that can fly, that live in air. Animals unable to fly, that live on land or water. Main drawback of Aristotle's classification was that altogether different organisms were placed in same group and similar organisms were placed in separate groups. Like corals, whales, octopuses, starfish, and sharks are entirely different animals living in sea. So there is need to decide what characteristics should be considered for classifying living organisms. Do you know what is characteristics? I think it is a particular form or a particular function of an organism. These characteristics should be interrelated. Some of them are as follows. Cell structure, unicellular or multicellular, autotrophic or heterotrophic, level of organization, and body design. Classification and Evolution It was considered that 
present living species appeared on earth in existing from two centuries ago. We all know that origin and diversity in species have been explained on the basis of evolution. The species changed slowly over generation. In due course of time, the various groups of plants and animals have developed. As a result, many different species evolved, each of which adapted itself for a particular environment. Evolution also explains the resemblance between different species. This is due to the reason that all these species are related by the descent which have common ancestor. So the process of evolution from a single ancestral species of a variety of forms which occupy somewhat different habitats is called adaptive radiation. During the course of evolution we find some groups of organisms have ancient body designs which have not changed much. These organisms are known as primitive or lower organisms. While there is another group of organisms which have acquired their body designs during the course of evolution, these are known as advanced or higher organisms. Biodiversity We can define the diversity of life forms is known as biodiversity. Diverse life forms share the environment and are affected by each other too. As a result, stable community of different species comes into existence. During the process of development, human beings have also changed the balance of environment by affecting particular characteristics of land, water, air, etc. There are approximately 10 millions of species on the planet Earth. But only 1 to 2 million of them are known to us as we have discussed earlier. Approximately 1 million of these organisms are insects. 50% of these organisms live in tropical rainforests which have not been still explored. The warm and humid tropical regions of Earth between Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn are rich in biodiversity, so these are called the region of megadiversity. The biodiversity is concentrated in a few countries due to the presence of favorable climatic conditions. About 50% of planet's biodiversity can be found in countries like Australia, Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, China, India, Indonesia, Madagascar, Malaysia, Mexico, Peru and Zaire. The hierarchy of classification groups. We can define. The hierarchy is a system of classification into which taxonomy categories are placed into order of logical sequence. Some eminent biologists such as Ernst Haeckel, 1894, Robert Whittaker, 1959, and Carl Woese, 1977, tried to classify all living organisms into broad categories called kingdoms. Robert Whittaker proposed five kingdom system in 1969, which has become a popular standard and with some refinement, is still used in many works and forms the basis for newer multi-kingdom systems. It is based mainly on differences in nutrition. His plantae were mostly multicellular autotrophs, his animalia multicellular heterotrophs, and his fungi multicellular saprotrophs. The remaining two kingdoms, Protista and Monera, included unicellular and simple cellular colonies. Later on, Carl Woos made little modification by dividing Monera into two sub-kingdoms, Archibacteria and Eubacteria. All the organisms are classified into various levels as follows. Kingdom, Phylum, Animals, Division, Plants, Class, Order, Family, Genus, Species. So we can say the basic unit of classification is species. Now we are going to discuss important characters of the five kingdoms. Kingdom Monera Do you know the main characteristics of Kingdom Monera are that they lack nuclear membranes, they are devoid of plastids, mitochondria, and advanced 9 plus 2 strand flagella. They are typically unicellular organisms. The predominant mode of nutrition is absorptive but some groups are photosynthetic or chemosynthetic. Reproduction is primarily asexual by fission or budding. 
Mondrian cells are microscopic. Most organisms bear a rigid cell wall. Example Anabina, Nostoc, Oscillatoria, Bacteria. The kingdom Monera is divided into two sub kingdoms Archibacteria, Eubacteria. Kingdom Protista. All single celled eukaryotes are placed under Protista. The Protista have simple organization, either they are unicellular or they are multicellular without specialized tissues. This simple cellular organization distinguishes the Protista from other eukaryotes such as fungi, animals, and plants. The term Protista was first used by Ernst Haeckel in 1866. Protista were traditionally subdivided into several groups based on similarities to the higher kingdoms. The one-celled animal-like protozoa, the plant-like protophyta, mostly one-celled algae, and the fungus-like slime molds and water molds. Protista live in almost any environment that contains liquid water. Many protista, such as the algae, are photosynthetic and are vital primary producers in ecosystems, particularly in the ocean as part of the plankton. Being eukaryotes, the protistant cell body contains a well-defined nucleus and other membrane-bound organelles. Some have flagella or cilia. Protista reproduce asexually and sexually by a process involving cell fusion and zygote formation. They may be divided into chrysophytes, dinoflagellates, euglenoids, slime molds, and protozoans under protista. Examples: algae, diatoms, and protozoans. Kingdom Fungi. It is the kingdom of multicellular heterotrophic decomposers. For example, yeast, muco, agaricus, etc. These heterotrophic may be saprophytes or parasites. A fungus occurs in soil, air, water, and parasitic on plants as well as the animals. These are non chlorophyllous organisms. Their body consists of hypha. They are unicellular, for example, yeast which is used to make bread and beer. Cell wall of fungi consists of chitin and polysaccharides. Fungi make symbiotic association with algae in lichens. Fungi reproduce by fragmentation, fission, budding, conidia, and sexually by oospores, zygopores, ascopores, and basidiopores, etc. Spore-producing bodies are known as the fruiting bodies. These are spore-producing echlorophyllous organisms like mildew, rhizopus, muco, rusts bracket fungi, morals, and mushrooms. Some fungi cause diseases. For example, rust is caused by pachinia. The smut is caused by ustilago. Penicillium produces antibiotic. Kingdom Plantae Plants are living organisms belonging to the kingdom plantae. The plant cells have an eukaryotic structure with prominent chloroplasts and cell wall mainly made of cellulose. Plantae includes algae, bryophytes, teritophyta, gymnosperms and angiosperms. The scientific study of plants known as botany has identified about 350,000 extant species of plants defined as seed plants, bryophytes, ferns, and fern allies. They include familiar organisms such as trees, herbs, bushes, grasses, vines, ferns, mosses, and green algae. As of 2004, some 2,87,655 species had been identified of which 2,58,650 are flowering and 18,000 are bryophytes. Green plants, sometimes called viridi plantae, obtain most of their energy from sunlight via a process called photosynthesis. A few members are partially heterotrophic, such as the insectivorous plants and parasites. Bladderwort and Venus flytrap, examples of insectivorous plants, and cuscata is a parasite. Division of Kingdom Plantae
kingdom plantae is further divided into various divisions at the first level according to fact that plant body has well differentiated distinct components kingdom plantae is next divided into various divisions according to the fact that differentiated plant body has special tissues for the transport of water and other substances within it kingdom plantae is further divided into various divisions according to ability to bear seeds and the whether seeds are enclosed within fruits kingdom plantae is further divided into two divisions cryptogams with spores hidden reproductive organs thallophytes bryophytes and pteridophytes come under this division phanerogams with seeds gymnosperms and angiosperms come under this division Division Thalophyta Do you know that Thalophyta is derived from Greek words thallus, which means plant body without root, stem and leaves, plus phyta, a plant. So the plants do not have well differentiated body design. The plants in this group are commonly known as algae. Thalophytes are mainly aquatic plants. Some common examples of algae are Eulothrix, Spirogyra, Chara, Cladophora and Ulva. Division Bryophyta. Similarly, Bryophyta is derived from Greek words Bryon, which means moss or a liverwort, plus Phyta, which means a plant. So the plant's body is commonly differentiated to form stem and leaf like structures. The plants in this group are also known as amphibians. There are no specialized tissue to conduct water and minerals. Some common examples are Funaria, Marcantia, Rishia, and Anthoceros. Division Pteridophyta. Likewise, Pteridophyta is derived from Greek words Pteris, fern, plus Phyta, a plant. So the plant's body is commonly differentiated into root, stem, and leaf. There is specialized tissue to conduct water and minerals from one part of the plant body to the other part. Some common examples are Marsilia, Lycopodium, Saligenella, Equisetum, Azola, Adiantum, and Dryopteris. Division Gymnosperms Similarly, gymnosperm is derived from Greek words gymnos, which means naked, plus spermos, which means seed. Gymnosperms are most primitive plants and their seeds are simple and naked, that is, seeds are not enclosed inside a fruit. They are usually evergreen perennial and woody plants. They are further divided into two groups. Cycadi, Coniferi. Some common examples are Jinko, Cycas and Pinus. Division Angiosperms. Similarly, angiosperm is derived from Greek words angion, case, cover, plus spermos, seed. Angiosperms are highly evolved plants and they produce seeds that are enclosed within the fruit. The reproductive organs are aggregated in a flower, so they are also called flowering plants. Embryos of plant have cotyledons. These cotyledons are leaf like. So, they are also known as seed leaves. On the basis of number of cotyledons present in seeds of plants, angiosperms are divided into two groups. Monocotyledonous, mono is one. Dicotyledonous, di, which is two. Some common examples are pisum, pea, salinum, potato, rosa, rose, ficus, banyan, melia, neem, malus, apple, and Magnifera, Mango, etc. Did you know? Canalus Linus is known as father of taxonomy. Natural system of classification is based on morphological characters and was proposed by John Ray. Phylogenetic system of classification was proposed by Engler and Prantl and is based on evolutionary relationship.
Thomas Cavalier Smith, in his classification of 2004, treats the archaeobacteria as part of a subkingdom of the kingdom bacteria. That is, he rejects the three domain system entirely. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Classification helps us in finding out the diversity of all life forms. The classification of life forms is related to their evolution. The major characteristics considered for classifying all organisms into five major kingdoms are whether they are made up of prokaryotic or eukaryotic cells, whether organisms are unicellular or multicellular, whether organisms have cell wall, whether organisms prepare their own food. All living organisms are divided on the above basis into five kingdoms. Mandra, Protista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia. Plantae and Animalia are further divided into subdivisions on the basis of increasing complexity of body organization. Plants are divided into five groups. Thalophytes, Bryophytes, Teledophytes, Gymnosperms, and Geosperms. Introduction as we have discussed earlier that there are about 1.2 million animal species with great diversity of life. These animals differ from one another in their habitat, level of organization, body plan, symmetry, body cavity, germ layer, mode of locomotion, respiration, excretion, reproduction, etc. Animals are eukaryotic, multicellular and heterotrophic organisms. Animal cells do not have cell walls. Most of the animals are mobile. Animals are aquatic, example fishes, or terrestrial, example reptiles, mammals, etc. Or aerial, example birds, on the basis of their habitat. On the basis of level of organization, animals either have cellular organization, example sponges, or tissue organization, example sealant rates. According to symmetry, Animals are either radially symmetrical, example sponges, cylindrates and echinoderms, or bilaterally symmetrical, example nematodes, arthropods, annelids and vertebrates, and some are asymmetrical, example snails. On the basis of body cavity, the animals are either acylomates, example cylindrates and flatworms, or pseudocylomates, example nematodes. According to presence of number of germ layers, animals are either diploblastic, example sponges, cylindrates, or triploblastic, example flatworms to mammals. We will now discuss some important characters and examples of various phylum of kingdom animalia. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you will be able to Understand the characters of Kingdom Animalia Find out the divisions of Kingdom Animalia Understand the characters of classes of Kingdom Animalia Understand nomenclature Phylum Porifera do you know that word porifera is derived from Greek words porous, which is pores, plus ferre, to bear, which means organisms which bear pores or holes in its body. Due to presence of holes all over the body, there is a canal system which helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen. The animals of phylum porifera are sessile, sedentary and marine except one group. They are commonly called as sponges. These are non-motile animals attached to some solid support. The body of Porifera is covered with a hard outside layer of skeleton. 
Skeleton is made up of calcareous or siliceous spicules or spongin fiber or both. The body design has very minimal differentiation and division into tissues. They are multicellular, diploblastic and radically or asymmetrical animals. Some common examples of polyphera are Euplectella, Cycon, Spongula, Cleona, Oscarella and Euspongia. Phylum Coelantrata Similarly, Coelantrata is derived from Greek words Koilos, hollow, plus enteron, gut. The animals of phylum Coelantrata are aquatic and are mostly marine except hydra. They are also called nitarians. They are multicellular, diploblastic, and radially symmetrical animals. Their central cavity is called coelantrons or gastrovascular cavity, which helps in digestion and circulation. The body wall is made up of two layers outer epidermis and inner gastrodermis. Most of the animals are colonial, while some have solitary lifespan, that is, hydra. Some common examples of coelantrata are hydra, abelia, aurelia, jellyfish, and metridium, sea anemone. Phylum platyhelminthus. Likewise, platyhelminthus is derived from Greek words platys is plat plus helminthus is worm. They have leaf like or ribbon like dorsal ventrally flat body, so they are also known as flat worms. The animals of phylum platyhelminthus are bilaterally symmetrical, multicellular, triploblastic. They do not have true coelom or body cavity. They have digestive cavity with a single opening, the mouth. They are mostly parasitic and few are free living, example, planaria. Some common examples of platyhelminthus are planaria, fasciola, liver fluke, schictosoma, and tenia, tapeworm. Phylum nematoda or nemanthelminthus. Similarly, nemanthelminthus or nematoda is derived from Greek words nema, which is thread, plus helmins, worm. The animals of phylum nemanthelminthus are bilaterally symmetrical, multicellular, and triploblastic. Their body is cylindrical, tapering to its ends. There are tissues. Real organs are absent, although pseudocelum is present. They are mostly parasitic disease causing, example, ascaris causing ascariasis, butcheraria causing elephantiasis, and entriobius causing entrobiasis. Some common examples of nemanthelminthus are ascaris, butcheraria, entrobius, and encyclostoma hookworm. Phylum Analida. Do you know that word analida is derived from Greek words analis, a ring which means body is segmented. The animals of phylum Anelida are bilaterally symmetrical, multicellular, and triploblastic. They have true body cavity, or they are coelomates. There are organs present and distributed in metamerically segmented body. They are found in various habitats like freshwater, marine water, and land. Some common examples of Anelida are Feritima, Earthworm, Herodinaria, Leech, Neris. Phylum Arthropoda. Similarly, Arthropoda is derived from Greek words arthros, which is jointed, plus podos, which is foot, which means jointed legged animals. The animals of phylum Arthropoda are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, and metamerically segmented. They have false body cavity or hemocelomates, that is, false body cavities filled with blood. They have open circulatory system. Their body is divided into two, cephalothorax and abdomen, or three parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. Arthropoda from the largest group of animals, about nine lakh species of arthropoda are known till date. They are aquatic or terrestrial. Some common examples of arthropoda are Pelumon, prawn, periplanata, cockroach, apis, honeybee, musca, housefly, anopheles, mosquito, tiflocactus, scorpion, pagaristus, crab, narcissus, millipede, and 
peeries, butterfly, etc. Phylum mollusca. Likewise, the word mollusca is derived from Greek words molluscus, soft, body is soft. The animals of phylum mollusca are bilaterally symmetrical with little segmentation and without appendages. The size of body ranges from microscopic to a giant, that is octopus. They have reduced body cavity or hemocele. They have an open circulatory system and kidney-like excretory organs. Their body is divided into an anterior head, a vascular muscular foot and a hard dorsal visceral mass. Foot is used for movement. The entire body of mollusca is covered by a fold of thin skin called mantle. This mantle secretes a hard calcareous shell of one or more pieces. Some common examples of mollusca are Chiton, Octopus, Pilla, Unio and Sapia, Cuttlefish. Phylum Echinodermata Similarly, Echinodermata is derived from Greek words Echinos, which is spiny or hedgehog, plus derma, which is skin. Thus, these are spiny skinned organisms. They are exclusively free living marine animals. The animals of phylum Echinodermata have radially, bilaterally, or pentamerous symmetry. They are triploblastic. They have true body cavity or coelom, which is modified into water vascular system, which is used for locomotion. Their body has oral and aboral surfaces. Oral surface has five radial areas called ambulacra. The entire body is covered by hard calcium carbonate structures that they use as skeleton. Some common examples of echinodermata are Asterius, starfish, Echinus, sea urchin, Antidon, sea lily, Ophiotrix, brittle star. Phylum protocordata. Do you know that word protocordata is derived from Greek words proto is primitive plus corda is string. The animals are bilaterally symmetrical, triple blastic, and have coelom. They have notochord, which is long rod-like support structure that runs along the back of the animals separating the nervous tissue from the gut. This notochord is not present at all stages of life. Notochord provides a place for muscles to attach for ease of movement. They are exclusively marine animals. Some common examples of protocol data are Balanoglossus, Phylum vertebrata. Similarly, word chordata is derived from Greek words corda, which is string. The animals are bilaterally symmetrical triple blastic, silomic, and segmented with complex differentiation of body tissues and organs. They have notochord, which is long rod-like support structure that runs along the body close to dorsal surface of animals separating the nervous tissue from the gut. This notochord is present at all stages of life. They have a dorsal tubular nerve cord close to notochord. They have paired gill pouches at some stages of life. They have a true vertebral column and internal skeleton which allows a different distribution of muscle attachment points for movement of body parts. They have complex differentiation of body tissues and organs. Vertebrates are further divided into five classes. Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, Mammalia. Class Pisces The word Pisces comes from the Indo-European root pesk. It means fish. They are exclusively aquatic animals. They obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using gills. The animals of Pisces have streamlined body and have fins and a muscular tail which is used for movement. They have a cartilaginous or bony skeleton. The skin is covered with scales or plates. They are cold-blooded animals, that is, their body temperature changes with change in atmospheric temperature. Their heart is two-chambered. Their eyes are without eyelids. They have nostrils. They lay eggs. Some common examples of Pisces are Scoliodon, dogfish, 
Sinkiropus, Mandarin fish, Teroyas, lionfish, electric ray, stingray, etc. Glass amphibia. Do you know that word amphibia is derived from Greek words amphi, which is double, plus bios, which is life, which means organisms which can live in water as well as on land. They are evolved from fish, but they have muscle glands in the skin in places of scales. Their skin is smooth, slippery, rich in mucus. Their heart is three-chambered. The respiration takes place either through gills or lungs. They have two pairs of limbs and their digits do not have claws. They lay eggs. Some common examples of amphibia are salamander, bufo, toad, rana, common frog, hyla, tree frog, etc. Class Reptilia Similarly, reptilia is derived from Latin words repri, it means to crawl. It means the creeping animals. They are mainly found on land. They also live in water. The skin is covered with epidermal scales. Their skin is waterproof and is protected with horny scales. They are cold-blooded animals. Their heart is three-chambered. Only crocodile has four-chambered heart. The respiration takes place either through lungs. Their body has head, neck, trunk and a tail. They have two pairs of tetrapodus, pentadactyl limbs and claw digits. They lay eggs with tough covering so they do not need to lay eggs in water. Some common examples of reptilia are turtle, camleon, naja, king cobra, draco, flying lizard, hemidactylus, house lizard etc. Class Aves Do you know that word Aves is derived from Latin word Avis, which is bird? Their body is spindle or boat shaped, which is divisible into head, neck, trunk, and tail. The body is covered with feathers. They are warm blooded animals. Their heart is four chambered. They breathe through lungs. Two forelimbs are modified into wings for flight. Hind limbs bear four clawed digits and are adapted for walking, perching, or swimming. They lay eggs having calcareous shell. Some common examples of AVs are Ciconia, white stork, Ithia, male tuft duck, Estuthio, ostrich, Columba, pigeon, Passa, sparrow, Corvus, crow, etc. Class Mammalia Similarly, mammalia is derived from Latin word mammae, which means breasts or nipples. They have mammary glands for the production of milk to nourish their young ones. Their skin has hairs and sweat and oil glands. They are warm-blooded animals. Their heart is four-chambered. Their body is divisible into head, neck, trunk and tail. External ear, pinna are present. They have four limbs. Diaphragm divides body into two cavities internally. They breathe through lungs. Mammals give birth to young ones except two mammals, Echidna and Platypus, which lay eggs. Some common examples of mammalia are cat, rat, bat, monkey, chimpanzee, gorilla and man. Nomenclature Nomenclature is the system of naming living organisms, that is, plants and animals. Do you know why there is need of nomenclature? I will tell you. Because common names cover only localized organisms and do not cover plants and animals of entire earth. Second problem was that one organism has many names as different people in different areas have different languages, so they name organisms accordingly. Third problem was that some names were misleading like starfish, Cuttlefish, jellyfish are actually not fishes. Most important drawback is that there is no scientific basis in selecting a common name. In 18th century, 
Carolus Linnaeus introduced scientific system of binomial nomenclature for naming the organisms in his book Species Plantarum. According to binomial nomenclature, every scientific name is formed of two words, genus and species. There are some rules which should be followed during writing the scientific names in binomial nomenclature. Each scientific name must have two words, generic and specific name. Generic name must start with capital letter. Specific name must start with small letter. Scientific names are generally derived from Greek or Latin word. When printed, they should be in italics. When handwritten or typed, they should be underlined. Scientific names are significant because they are same all over the world. They indicate evolutionary relationship. They solve the problem of multiple naming of one organism. Did you know animal kingdom is broadly classified into two groups? Non-chordates and chordates. Non-chordates include eight phylum, Polyphera, Cylentrata, Platyhelminthus, Nematoda, Annelida, Anthropoda, Mollusca, and Echinodermata. While chordates are again classified into two subgroups, Protochordata and Vertebrata. Vertebrata is again divided into five classes, Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Animals are multicellular eukaryotes with heterotrophic nutrition, locomotion, and sensitivity through the nervous system. All animals are included in Kingdom Animalia. Animals may be at cellular level, tissue level, or organ level of organization. Body of animals can be asymmetrical, radially symmetrical, or bilaterally symmetrical. Animals may be diploblastic or triploblastic depending upon the number of germinal layers at the early developmental stage. Animals may be acelomates, no body cavity, pseudocelomates, having false coelom, or coelomates, having true coelom. Kingdom Animalia is divided into ten phylum, Polyphera, Coelentrata, Platyhelminthus, Nematoda, Annelida, Anthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, Protochordata, and Vertebrata. Vertebrates are further divided into five classes Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia. The binomial nomenclature makes for a uniform way of identification of the vast diversity of life around us. The binomial nomenclature is made up of two words, a generic and a specific name.